Hello, everybody. I, I uh, hope everyone's doing well. Uh, welcome. Welcome back to our continuing audio community plugin. Uh, my name is Greg Chin. I am the uh, audio evangelist for Avid, and it is a pleasure to be back with you guys. We've been doing these over the last couple of months, uh, last few months. Uh, on Tuesdays, every other Tuesdays or so, we shift it around here and there, depending on, on our schedule. Um, it is really great to be back. Um, we've had some really great webinars uh, over the past couple of months, uh, you know, covering a wide assortment of topics. And the one today is, is, I mean, I've been excited about all of them. I'm extremely excited about the one we have today. We've got a really great panel um, uh, talking about their, uh, the journey, really, uh, uh, around Dolby Atmos and the immersive space specifically for music. So uh, here at Avid, we're all, you know, we're very, very thrilled by the fact that we were able to uh, not only enable creators to, uh, you know, create the music they, and, and, and audio that they'd like to uh, using our, our tools, uh, specifically Dol uh, Dolby Atmos inside of Pro Tools Ultimate, but also the ability to be able to deliver music uh, in the Atmos format um, for services. Uh, via Avid Play. So we're going to talk about some of that with some really amazing guests today, and we're going to jump right into that. So again, welcome everyone. I hope everyone's staying safe wherever in the world you are. Um, you know, to all of our, our viewers, uh, wherever you might be. So obviously here, if you registered for, for the webinar here on our, our Zoom, uh, you know, welcome. Uh, and of course, across all of our different social uh, platforms, social media platforms, whether you're on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, wherever you might be, Twitch, uh, put down your Xbox controller and, and hang out for a little bit. Uh, welcome to everyone. Again, I hope everyone's staying safe. Uh, interesting times we find ourselves in, but that doesn't mean that the music and the creation um, or anything that we're passionate about stops. So uh, again, thank you guys for being here. So just a couple of quick things before we jump into it. Um, I'd like to do some, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, so you guys are a little bit, uh, so you guys are aware how to, uh, how to best utilize uh, being able to uh, enjoy this webinar. So for those of you who registered, um, you're here in Zoom. So just a couple things to help you uh, navigate uh, the Zoom space uh, a little bit easier. So we do have a, a quite a, a, a sizable panel today. So there are going to be several, several guests and speakers so, uh, so that you're able to kind of manage all of that on, on your screen. Um, just you might want to make sure you click on the top right hand corner of your of your zoom interface and make sure that gallery view is selected if you have speaker view what will happen is if i'm speaking or if someone else is speaking going back and forth your 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 uh, the you know the uh, the video for that for those folks will keep going back and forth and can be a little a little jarring so i don't want anyone to be motion sick um, so if you go ahead and, and, and uh, click gallery view that you'll be able to see everyone and it'll feel you know more like a round table discussion than you're part of the uh part of the panel. So make sure you've got that. And of course, uh, we've got so many folks here uh, and you know, most everyone's gonna be off camera, uh, of course. So you wanna make sure that you hide any non-video participants. So to do that, uh, if you see your, your little uh, mute button, there's a little, a little pull down menu with three dots right in it, uh, directly to the right of that. If you click that, just select hide non-video participants and that'll, that'll give you some screen real estate back. Okay, so. Let's moving right along. Uh, obviously, we want to make sure that we have some time to take your questions. So I also want to thank all of our moderators here uh, in Zoom and uh, everywhere else across our social media platforms. We've got some of our amazing product specialist team um, who are going to be moderating. So here uh, in Zoom, we've got uh, Dave Tyler and Gil Gowing. And of course, across Facebook, our, our, our two Facebooks, uh, LinkedIn, um, and everywhere else, we've got folks uh, from the product specialist team, um, some really great uh, uh, gentlemen and, and ladies who are going to be taking your questions over there as well. We'll try and, 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 and uh, answer as many as we can here when we get to Q&A. So for those of you here, it, it, wherever you might be in your social platforms, go ahead and ask those questions. The team will gather them up and send them over as, 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 as need be. And here... Uh, for the folks that are specifically on Zoom, uh, there is a Q&A button that you'll find on your, on your Zoom panel there. Uh, you can click that, ask your question, and uh, Dave and Gil will, will uh, make sure that we, 
we, uh, we, we get those answered um, uh, as quickly as possible. Now, again, we won't necessarily be able to get to every single question, uh, but we'll do our very best. But please make sure you use that. And uh, I believe the chat function is, is disabled, so you shouldn't be able to use that anyway. So make sure you get that <clears throat> in uh, directly into the Q&A with as much uh, detail as possible. And of course, if it's uh, di directed to one of our panelists specifically, let us know that and uh, we'll have a great time. So with that, um, moving right ahead, we've got a really great panel set up. And uh, again, the, the uh, discussion today is really around um, the immersive space for music, specifically Dolby Atmos, and um, really looking at the journey from creation all the way to, to getting that stuff out uh, to your listeners and what that means uh, for you as, as a user, as a creator. And we've got a, a, a crack panel of, of some really great ta talent. So we've, we're, we're joined by some uh, talent here at Avid. So we've got Rob D'Amico, who is um, uh, you know, uh, our director of product marketing for Avid and uh, specifically Avid Play. Uh, Carrie Thomas from Dolby Labs, from uh, Dolby Laboratories is joining us as well. Uh, and uh, those of you who are familiar with Atmos, if you think about uh, Dolby Atmos, usually Carrie, Carrie's face is uh, the one that, that'll pop up in your mind. So we're really glad to have him here. And we've got three really, really great guests who are uh, playing and creating and, and, and have businesses in, in this uh, immersive music space. And they're all leveraging, uh, you know, using Dolby Atmos, uh, Pro Tools, and of course, Avid Play as well. So we're going to hear from them. So we've got uh, Mert Oskin, Ray Mia, Mark Gustafson. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome my panel. So you, if you guys want to go ahead and uh, uh, turn on your cameras, and then um, I'll ask each of you to introduce yourselves. So we'll go around the room quickly and uh, just give us a, a quick intro, your name, where you're based, a little bit about your, your role, whether it's on the creative side, on the business side, and then we'll jump right into it. So I figure, uh, Mark, we'll, we'll go ahead and start with you. Hi, I'm Mark Gustafson. Uh, I'm originally from the Chicago area, but I'm now based just north of London in St. Albans. Um, I'm a producer engineer and a recent founder of Tambourine Machine Records, which is a record company that is primarily for distribution of Atmos content. Um, I've been working in audio for about 15 years. Uh, some of that is live work and mostly studio work. Excellent. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Mert. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Mert Özcan. I'm originally from Turkey, but now based in LA, and I run the Record House. Uh, I noticed that the slide says Rocket House, which is a bit more exciting and fitting for <laughs> being near SpaceX here in El Segundo. But as the name suggests, uh, we uh, produce records with artists and also do sound design, post-production for film, TV, and also working on like advertising commercial projects in terms of you know making music for them. And at the beginning of the year, we installed the Atmos mix room at our studio to be able to do immersive mixing both in music and, um, again, TV and episodic content. Thanks, man. Sorry, sorry for the mistake there on the, uh, on the title. I'll, I'll fix that oh, right man. away. <laughs> but thank you. Thanks for joining us. Mr. Ray Mia. Ray Mia. Hello, everybody. Uh, good afternoon, evening, good morning. Uh, I'm Ray Mir. I'm a Capra Maestro at Jacaranda Records Limited. Um, it's a uh, immersive first music house that was set up two years ago. Um, I'm a former EVP of UMG. I've been on the Atmos immersive audio journey since being bitten by the bug, since Dolby bit me uh, around about 2015 uh, and, and got involved with what it is that UMG is doing with their phenomenal rollout. Uh, and Dolby and the birth of Dolby Music, which is fantastic also. Um, so not only setting up the record label in Liverpool, but, but also moving into being a producer. So we've been developing artists and releasing content. So we're uh, very pleased to be on this panel today. Excellent. Uh, great to have you, Ray. Thank you. Mr. Kerry Thomas. Thanks. And uh, good to be joined by all of you today. Um, thanks for having me. Um, so, uh, the prep work said pre-Atmos, and that seems like an awfully long time ago, because uh, I was doing Atmos before it was called Atmos, um, back at uh, back at Tadeo prepping some sessions where uh, we didn't really know what it even was, so I've been, uh, been here since the inception. Um, role is uh, content and studio enablement for Dolby Atmos Music, uh, very excited to uh, 
be uh, able to be pushing that out into the community, working with uh, some great engineers and producers and uh, and labels. So. It's great to have you, Carrie, and we've we've uh, we've loved the partnership we've had here at Avid with with uh, with you and Dolby uh, around Atmos and, and everything else. So thank you, thank you for being here. Last but not least, Mr. Rob D'Amico from Avid. Hey everyone, thanks uh, for, for joining. I'm Rob D'Amico, Director of Product Marketing at, at Avid. Uh, also um, head up the initiatives with Avid Play and it's uh, been a great adventure uh, working with these these folks on the panel um, and uh, enabling Avid Play to really empower independent artists and labels to really get their high quality music and Dolby Atmos music now distributed to the rest of the world to really experience. So it's a pleasure being yeah. here and, and listening to these guys uh, in their journey in uh, adopting Atmos in their workflows. Awesome. It's great to have you, Rob. Great to have all of you. So um, with that, we've got some introductions out of the way and we will uh, we'll jump right into this. So again, thank you all for, for joining us. Um, Let's just jump right into it. So, you know, you guys gave a little bit of, of, of an intro of, you know, your, your roles and we've got you know, a really nice uh, diverse set of, of, of you, know, you know, roles here from the creative side to the business side. But for, for, and you know, I'll throw this out to anyone who wants to take it first and then we'll kind of roll back a little bit. I wanted to kind of start with, uh, with uh, you know, some of, the, some of our guests and then um, kind of talk a little bit about specifically Avid Play and, and, and Dolby Atmos uh, a little bit, but how, what got you guys interested uh, in, in Dolby Atmos? You know, was, was there something that you first you know, heard that got you interested? How did that kind of come about, you know, your interest? And then, you know, and then we'll, we can talk about how you, you know, started planning to uh, start, start creating and, and dis distributing in this space. I'll open that to any of you, you know, who wanted to take that one first. I'll, uh, I'll throw my hat into the ring on that one. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> as I kind of alluded to, um, it, Dolby Atmos uh, fell into my line of sight. Uh, it wasn't planned. It was, um, as Kerry mentioned, just in terms of before it was called Atmos, it was called Atmos. The role that I had at UMG was about finding new technologies. <clears throat> uh, so uh, as EVP of advanced media, it meant that I went to go talk to really interesting companies about what it is they were doing. And a pretty senior chap at Dolby, who's now currently at UMG, um, after going through a whole phalanx of Dolby um, technologies, mostly on the visual side of things, uh, Dolby Vision, HDR content, <clears throat> Um, right at the end of, of a session that we had in Soho Square in London, you know, I was asked, um, is, is, is Elton John one of yours? And I was like, what do you mean one of ours? You know, you, you mean, does, does, it, does UMG represent Elton John? Yeah, if that's what you mean, yeah. <clears throat> and, and they sort of went, well, we got something. Do you, do you want to listen to something? Do you want to hold back and listen to something? This is 2015. And uh, so I went, yeah, sure. I listened to it. And, I, and I'm pretty sure everybody here on the panel knows what I'm about to say here because it was the eponymous Rocket Man produced by Greg Penny. And it just blew my head off. Just, just there was no words to describe the theatrical print in the brilliant Dolby Soho Square playback facility. Um, and it, I just didn't, I just ripped, it just ripped my head off and, you know, you know, sort of empty toilet down my throat. It was, it was, I just didn't know how to react. I didn't know what to think. It was giddy. Uh, it was physical. It was a physical reaction. <clears throat> and I went away just um, incapable of comprehending what I just experienced. So from that point onwards, for me, it's been this journey. I and mean, it, it, it's all to do with Greg. It's all to do with what he did. It's all to do with the journey he went on. It's all to do with how much he understood the music. I've learned so much since then, and it snowballed. It was baby steps to begin with. And the, the effect that that presentation had, we've moved on so much since then, but just that one presentation, for instance, the presentation that was made only a couple of months later to Giles Martin, uh, <clears throat> playing back Greg Penny's uh, Rocket Man to, to Giles, precipitated Giles to say, all right, let's do the 50th anniversary of Sergeant Pepper. So there was a huge, these are big moving objects. And it was that that made me realize, wait a minute, there is this Atmos application to music. There is, there is something there creatively. 
and uh, commercially. Uh, so, so I've been involved with quite a lot of UMG based productions prior to me leaving and since leaving um, and setting up, you know, an immersive music label, an immersive, immersive first label, um, we've been able to look at what the commercial application of this is, as well as the technological understanding of all, how does one, and I'm sure the panel, we're going to go into it just in terms of how does one create, you know, what does that, how does one write, how does one produce in, in, in an immersive first, uh, 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 you know, um, process. Um, so, you know, I've been blessed, quite frankly, by the fact that I was introduced to things by folks who are, you know, legendary. Uh, and uh, it, what it really did for me, just so I can wrap it up and end what I'm saying here, is that it brought back, it brought back um, all of the enthusiasm and um, uh, wish to be involved in music from a production standpoint. The commercial stuff we're getting to, but just from being in a room with creatives and, and playing with the media in a really visceral way, that's something that I never thought, you know, having gone through sort of the corporate side of things, that I never really thought would come back. So I'm, I'm indebted to the, the format for, for opening things up for me. Wow, that's a, that's a really powerful statement. And clearly, you know, you, you being able to experience Dolby Atmos, you know, early on, uh, it, was, it was an exponential type of, it wasn't just, oh, this is surround. It was something much bigger than that, right? I mean, that was kind of the, 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 first, the first experience, right? Yeah, I mean, what I'd just say to you is, again, I don't want to, you know, go into sort of big words here, but, but it really has allowed me to sort of explore, you know, psychoacoustic storytelling, because I've, I've, been, I've been trying to define that feeling, the first feeling of listening to the guitars and the choral come in on Rocket Man. It, it, it's, it's physical. It's, it's yeah. something happens to your skin. Yeah, oh, that's amazing. That's very, very, very powerful. How about, how about you, Mark? Uh, yeah, I came to it... Um as I was starting to do pre-production for an artist out of Chicago called Yes Factory. And they, they had a more uh, storied album and they, they wanted to do something different with it. So it just kind of led me on the journey to, well, what can we do to make this different than the last thing we did? And kind of knowing a little bit about having heard, you know, that the Sgt. Pepper existed, that there have been these, these kind of up mixes, if you will. Um, it led me to, to kind of start subscribing to as much as I could and, and start digesting as much as I could. And again, physical is a very good way to put it. it it's, it's a moment where as someone who needs to bring production to the table, I was able to, to feel like I did the first time I was in a studio. That, that wears off incredibly quickly when you work professionally. It's, oh yeah, yeah, that's, this is how it sounds. And then, and then you're judging the monitoring or you're judging the room you're in. But that first time when it was like, this is magic, like how, this is what music can sound like? Well, that was me sitting at home on not a particularly excellent system. So that's, that's what I got out of a headphone listen. That's what I got out of uh, uh, an echo studio. And, and I'm like, wait a minute, this is, this is a great way forward. And certainly something that if you're going to have uh, a more conceptual record, something that, that is meant to be cinematic, and that's kind of your directive, somebody that has multiple violins and you know, 20 backing vocals that are meant to sound like robots, you go, I, I have what we're gonna do. And it's about the only way we're going to be able to do this record. And it, and it was exciting. And I've been on that journey for just about a year now. So it's incredible. Now that's all I work in. I yeah, start yeah. with Atmos. Yeah, and then whatever anyone wants, it's like, that's fine. You want the stereo version? Here it is. But here's the yeah. Atmos one. Because right. this, is, this is where I can give you the most. This is where I can produce my mix the best. Yeah, that, and also very powerful. And I, I, I have to say that kind of looking at your your scope of work, you know, over the last few months, really seeing that the focus has been really, really in Atmos has been really, really, really interesting and great to see. And here, we'll talk a little bit about that specifically a, a little later, but I, sure. I thank you for that. Um, Mert, how about you? Yeah, I mean, I got into Atmos actually uh, not too long ago. I mean, I knew about it mostly in the film and tv 
you know, sense. Um, but when I kind of made the investments in the studio and Cherry uh, found me uh, on Instagram of like a picture that I posted of the studio and came over with the Rocket Man track amongst others to play them here. It's like, this is what music and Atmos can sound like. And to like echo what Ray said, I mean, I think the Elton John piece is a quintessential example of what Atmos really is. And I actually kind of mentioned this in a blog post that I did for you guys at Avid, like it's a simple arrangement, but you know, compared to modern pop productions, there isn't too many elements in it. But when that chorus hits, you just explode. Like literally you shoot off to the sky. So, and I know it's definitely, as they were saying again, um, like as a kid, I would listen to music on headphones. I would close my eyes like in middle school, high school, and I would just get lost in the music. And now all of that thing that I was maybe imagining in my head is physically happening in the room. And you get goosebumps every time you hear a song. So it's, you know, to me also, like I can't even imagine like going back to stereo for anything, just maybe as like, okay, here's your stereo version type thing. Because yeah, I mean, whenever I listen to music at home now, I'm like, okay, what would I do with this? If I had the stems, how would I mix this? And yeah. I'm constantly kind of reimagining what it would be like. Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's, there's no going back. <laughs> no, I mean, Greg, I'd, I'd like to just pop in here to what Mark and Mert just said here. Um, you know, it, it, it's something that, that a couple of us in, in Jacaranda have been talking about, uh, and it may have got lost in all of the sort of, you know, PR and whatnot, but to what Mert just said and backing into what Mark just said, I, I very much feel as if there's a, you know, the mono stereo moment, you know, when Mert talks about stereos like <clears throat> this thing, I very much feel as if immersive audio is, you know, and I know there's been a bunch of false dawns. I get it. I get the five, one thing, I get the seven, one thing. I get it. But it, 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 this just feels different because of that joy that Mark was talking about, you know, I mean, I'm playing around with analog sense and I haven't done that in 20 odd years. Right. You know, that's like, that's like, I'm now back in, you know, they're all being brought out of storage, right. Which is crazy, but it's happening. And it's happening because I'm re exploring my musical roots, which for many years and because of life and job and, you know, corporate world, you go off in a different direction to, 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 to Mert's point about the bringing the joy back into it. And like I say, that moment where, Stereo is just a, almost like a byproduct. I can't conceive of doing anything ever again without being, it being immersive first. Well, I think uh, we, we could wrap the webinar up just, just from that, just from, just from those statements right there. Uh, you oh. know, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah, and, but that, that's precisely, thank you guys. That, that, that's, I wanted to start there because to me, you know, really the, the, the whole idea of, of, of this, this conversation is really around you know, we, we obviously we're in the technology business, right? You know, Kerry, Rob, uh, and myself, and we're always talking about the technology and how the technology is meant to serve you and blah, 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 blah. Uh, and that's great. But when the technology is, is automatically inspiring you and then pushing that forward, you know, really uh, enables you as a creator or even a, a, someone on the business side to be able to really want to share that and really have folks, um, you know, be able to publish stuff so folks can just, just, you know, ingest this and then really take it in. To me, that's extremely powerful. So I thank you guys. What I wanted to do at this point really quickly is go backwards a little bit. And, and Carrie, you know, uh, obviously, you know, Dolby, the, the, the Dolby name and brand is synonymous with the immersive space and talking about surround and, you know, 5.1 is, you know, kind of became very, very, very popular and, and was really widely adopted, certainly on the consumer side. Uh, m moving forward from that, you know, what is it, Obviously, you, you know the results of, of why everyone's really interested and why this is so, so, so big for a lot of folks to, 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 to think about. But what was it, you know, what, what was the, in, in a kind of a brief synopsis, why did Dolby want to move forward with it? I mean, you know, because you guys are covering it from all angles, but give us the quick, the quick scoop. Well, I mean, I, th I think for me, the, the thing that's different about this versus 5.1, 7.1 is that we're, we're starting with the render technology, right? So we're, we're not going to a speaker format. We're not going to a channel account. We're not going, we're creating a sound field and allowing that to really exist in whatever way that you've got it, right? So if you've got a 5.1.4 room, great, it will work. If you've got a sound bar, it will work there. 
And if you've got mobile devices, you know, we, you know, we, we see that virtualization and that technology you know, being integral to that. You know, at, at the end of the day, what killed 5.1 music was not you know, home theater systems not being set up right. It was the fact the iPod came out and you could put a thousand songs in your pocket and that was stereo. Um, well, by the way, Atmos is enabled in handheld devices and you know, all, all kinds of things like that. So we're, the, the ecosystem is such that it exists to translate what you're hearing in that studio, what you're putting into your, your, your craft into those environments. So, you know, I think that this is, uh, this is going to be a, a, a different set of discussions. Um, you know, we all talked about listening on headphones. That's a major part of what's going on, right? We you know, talk about HRTF and the things that, you know, we're, we're trying to virtualize in that, in that form. And, you know, there are no speakers when it comes to that, uh, you know, head-related transfer function. There, there are no speakers when it comes to that virtualization. It's just the sound field that exists. So you're taking a studio environment, putting it, strapping it around your head and virtualizing it in the best way possible. That's a, that's a no brain. It, it, it just works and uh, translates that essence of what, uh, what you're putting down onto, you know, one of a better description, what you're putting down onto tape into a, um, uh, into, a, into a real world environment that you can take with you on the go. That's awesome. Thank you, Kerry. So taking it a little bit on, on the Avid side quickly, Rob, so obviously, you know, uh, Dolby Atmos uh, is kind of baked into Pro Tools Ultimate and that's, you know, that was kind of a given and I think, you know, that was expected yeah. and we've done that. Uh, you know, we continue to work with Dolby, but I think one of the unexpected turns uh, that, that folks weren't really uh, expecting, certainly from us at Avid, was, was the idea of helping, helping folks uh, distribute their, their, their music, uh, you know, Atmos enabled music. Um, via Avid Play, T talk a little bit, just you know, kind of quickly about how that, yeah, you know, how you came to that decision and, and and how you decided to execute it with the team. Yeah, well, it starts many years ago with the partnership with Dolby, right? Um, we've been working so closely in figuring out how to integrate mixing and producing in Dolby Atmos, and so that many years of partnering and collaborating on, on ways of bringing the technology forward to producing for engineering. Um, it just made sense to, to talk with them about how we can enable this um, the community, the audio community, the independent community of artists and labels to, to be able to take control and empower their own destiny of, of distribution. And so we worked um, hand in hand every week to figure out the way to um, bring this to market and commercialize it. And uh, the process was really, really amazing from my perspective. It's always uh, so uh, humbling to work with people in the industry like Mark, Ray, Mert, and many others before we even went to market with this, just to get their feedback about how, how should this work, right? Uh, we have ideas here within Avid as, as, as we do, you know, to put forward a concept, but what comes between the concept and the release of a, of a product is, is the magic that working with customers to make sure that we're solving the needs of what they're trying to do. And, and we worked out a lot of scenarios throughout that process with these guys that they were so instrumental in, 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 in crafting what the end product is able to do. And the goal is to make it super easy, maintain every high, um, uh, the quality, maintain high quality uh, audio throughout the whole process and be able to get it in the hands of their audience to, you know, and, and new audiences that they, that they can grow with. So that's kind of in a nutshell, like the process, but, you know, it's, it's the collaboration with the, the users and the customers that make the product uh, do what it's capable of doing today and Thanks. what it will hopefully do tomorrow. <laughs> sure. yeah. Thanks for that, Rob. Yeah. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll dive into a little bit of the, some of the business side uh, aspects in, in, in a second, but I did want to ask um, a question and then maybe I'll, I'll start with Mert thinking about, you know, obviously you've got a, you know, you've got the room and you, you, you know, you've worked on getting it set up. What was the level of, of, I wouldn't say difficulty, but really, you know, you're, 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 when you're, when you're thinking about starting a new room or, or changing a room or transforming a room from, a stereo room to now a fully immersive environment that you know you've got to consider renderers, speakers, all, all these kinds of things. 
what was that like for you to uh, to make that transition? Did you find it pretty straightforward? Um, it wasn't necessarily. I mean, <laughs> I definitely miss when we were setting up the studio to have uh, two cables left and right, and this is my sound, you know. <laughs> um, but I had a great team. Um, I work with these guys called Streamline Integration. We can give them a shout out. Um, I met them at the Sony conference uh, last year and uh, they kind of helped me like integrate and program the whole thing. And from the start, I want, I knew I wanted the room to be certified by Dolby. So we actually also worked with Dolby really closely during the design process. You know, they have their dart set up where you, you know, input the, okay, these are the speakers that I want to use. And this is the, you know, specifications that you need to have in terms of height and whatever. It was definitely a process uh, in terms of like, I, I'm in a facility, I got a second room to outfit this room to be an Atmos space. So if I was building from the ground up, it would have been, you know, maybe a bit easier in terms of the actual construction, but uh, it kind of worked. Uh, we kind of, um, I pulled the trigger on the design end of last year, I got around December, uh, January, February, we were all kind of like uh, figuring out the design besides like just speaker placement and everything else, like what gear do we want, what needs to happen and how to kind of make that work. And then the construction itself, I mean, uh, took like a couple of weeks to get it done. Um, and we were just done maybe four days before the lockdown happened, but it was definitely an interesting process for me because I hadn't necessarily done audio over IP before. So I had to wrap my head around the whole, you know, Dante network and what happens with that and how do you get audio from where and what does the renderer do and all that sort of thing. But I think, um, I mean, as any engineer, if anybody wants to like invest in this and kind of wants to go down this path, I mean, it's at the end of the day, it's signal flow. So if you kind of know your path, it makes sense. It's just a bit of a, you know, adjustment period, obviously, if you just had been working on stereo, but we were doing 5.1 also previously, so it wasn't that much of a jump, just the audio over IP thing was like, okay, I need to understand servers and whatever, uh, that sort of thing. But it was definitely, you know, uh, a process, but I mean, Dolby was really helpful. Like I said, during the design process, they give us good feedback and streamline uh, the designers there uh, did a great job, so yeah. Awesome, thanks for that. So, Mark, I wanted to ask uh, uh, specifically, so your first Atmos production was a remix you did, uh, the song was named Avenue for Elkin, was that the first one yes. you'd done? So I, I'd heard the original, and then I, I listened to your mix uh, in, in Atmos, and was just really awestruck by the amount, well, first that it was your first Atmos mix, which I didn't know when I first listened to it. But what struck me was the, uh, obviously, the, you know, the, the sense of space that you were able to provide there. I think when most people start thinking about immersive, I think one of the first things they think of, you know, is not music. They actually think about post and film and that kind of thing. But what struck me here with this mix in particular was that, you know, the song is great, you know, was already great. Your mix in particular, just again, the sense of space, but using um, not just the space, you know, you created a very, very uh, textured world, um, but you're you're utilizing kind of you know organic and traditional instrumentation along with some some other things. How did you even think to approach that? It was your first Atmos mix. What was your thought pattern? Like, what was your thought going into it? Like, how did you approach it? Um, well, uh, that's that's actually the first collaboration with that artist as well. Um, I was asked by his management to do a remix because because there will be a remix record. Every song on the Beach EP will have a remix by a different artist. And so I was asked to do this and said, I, I want to do it in, in Atmos. That's what I'm working in. This is what I'm doing. So I chose that one. Um, it was careful planning. It, it's It's not too dissimilar to sit down, have pre-production meeting with the artist. It just happens to be that it was me having a conversation with myself, but it's take notes. What do I want? Where are things going? How big, how close? And th those kind of thoughts led me to, well, what texture does that want to be? And then, well, that's this instrument. And it, it really helped then tell a story. So instead of just taking this little snapshot um, which is very personal singer songwriter, it's exploding it and saying, what if somebody took a short story and made a short film out of it? What is that like? And so there's a whole journey that someone goes on 
uh, in that in that space. And since then, we've now uh, worked as producer and artist on a full length record and have two more Dolby Atmos songs coming out this year still. So it, it, it convinced an artist to even consider me as a producer when I thought I was just uh, getting the opportunity to have fun with an excellent artist, somebody that I'd met a, a year prior and anything I can do. It, it, it meant that I was working now very closely. So it, it was everything. Uh, excellent. So we'll we'll share some a couple of uh, uh, Dolby Atmos music playlists at, at, at the end, and 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 your remix is uh, is in there. Uh, if you've not listened to it, make sure you check it out. Uh, we'll share those at the end of the uh, webinar. Thank you for that, Mark. So kind of diving into a little bit of the business side, and then we'll we'll talk a little bit about um, publishing uh, and what that means, and you know the ability to be able to do that pretty easily um, in, in this format specifically. But uh, Ray, specifically, you know, walk us through, if you can, why you and uh, Jacaranda, why the label is so bullish on, on Atmos content. You know, how, it, you know, we'd like to know how it impacts your, your immediate business and what that means, you know, how, how you see it developing in the future. Yeah, it's a, gr <clears throat> it's a great question. And uh, I'd like to start just by backing up a little bit and sort of talking about, you know, a little bit about what Mert and Mark were referring to. Um, um, and, and, and this is for <clears throat> all the folks out there listening. Um, we took a different uh, approach to what both Mert and Mark have outlined. And, and, and that's to say, there's many ways to skin a cat. You know, we went very guerrilla. We wanted to get our mix room <clears throat> set up, you know, within 24 hours. And, and we, we didn't want to overthink it. And, and the reason that being is that having come out of UMG and, you know, being involved in, in what it is that was going on at Abbey Road Studios and at Capital Studios, etc. For us, <clears throat> it was very important that we just applied learnings and just go, just get the room up and running, right? <clears throat> let's just, you know, put the speakers up and let's just get going. Let's learn as we go along. And of course, the support from Dolby has always been there. Um, uh, uh, but a lot of what we wanted to do was learn as we went along. So, you know, we, we also delved into <clears throat> Dolby's fantastic internship program and brought out, you know, two phenomenal guys that are sort of worked as engineers there, uh, James Kershaw, Jamie Barker, shout out to them. So we, we already adopted a, a, a Dolby methodology so that we could get the room up and running fast. <clears throat> and that applies to, to what Mert's saying in terms of, is very organized, which is a super cool way of doing it. Uh, we wanted to get a room up and running so that we could translate, get content that's produced in a room that may not necessarily have all the badges and the certification, but you could move content around globally <clears throat> so that you could do what Mark's referring to, which is collaborate <clears throat> and work with the likes of Greg Penny, who I was fortunate enough to work on one of our artists in his facility in Ojai and have him sprinkle his absurd magic over what it is we do. <clears throat> and then also show not tell how that then grows out to other engineers and other producers, you know, big name producers, you know, huge big name producers of them. Again, not wanting to do the whole, we're selling Dolby. We're selling a format. We're selling a process and a bunch of software that does this incredible stuff that makes all our skins crawl and gets us all really excited. <clears throat> so to back to your question, Greg, um, why are we so bullish? Well, if I could just pause on the music side and then just give everyone a very brief sort of understanding of the audiovisual film and television world, because the audiovisual film and television world has already adopted. There's no, there's no, there's no, uh, it's going to come down the line. It's, you can't deliver to Netflix or Apple TV or Disney Plus without delivering Atmos within their standards and guidelines. You have to deliver in Atmos. You know, one of the reasons why Dolby have probably stolen a march on all the other technologies that are out there, and there are other spatial audio technologies, there are, this is not just a song and dance for Dolby, is that they're just ahead of the game. They're in all the cinemas, right? They're, it's already been adopted by the Netflixes, Apple TVs and Disney Pluses. And so when you've got these hulking great big streaming platforms that are already pushing this content out, which is all about sound design, and I'm sure Mark can absolutely support what I'm saying here in terms of the art of the creative and also merch because this is this is the commercial avenue so why am I so bullish because the work's there 
Why am I so bullish? Because, well, you know, a, a tiny startup record label in Liverpool set up, yeah, sure, by a dude who's an ex, you know, EVP at UMG, but why have we managed to take down a couple of major streaming platform films? Why have we managed to do sound design for a whole bunch of, you know, uh, a bona fide American soap opera, 9, 9 p.m., Eastern Standard Time, Thursday primetime slots, right? That's because the work's there. And that is because we as a community of creatives, <clears throat> whether that's producers, whether that's engineers, whether you're on the tech side or whether you're on the commercial side, this is about giving audiences what they want. We all know that these devices are getting more and more sophisticated. We all know what Apple are doing regarding the AirPods and their onboarding of more spatial technologies. It's all about unique selling points. So on the one hand, we're bullish because we know there's a market there for this content audio visual or not. From a music perspective, there's a market there because I can engage with the artists that we've signed up or the artists we're developing or the artists we're mixing with, it, mixing with uh, <clears throat> um, on, on, a, on a deeply profound creative level, on a deeply profound and creative level, um, you know, and so, and that's unusual. So the fact is that these tools and the ecosystem that's been built around it, I mean, look who's put this webinar together. You've got, you've got Avid, You've got Dolby. A year ago, you wouldn't, we wouldn't have thought that there would have been a webinar that would have been put together by Avid, right, you know, and Dolby. The ecosystem has already, in a, such a sort of small space of time, developed, you know, from back listening to Rocket Man five years ago to where we are now, where you can listen to that Rocket Man mix on Tidal, which is another phenomenal thing that Dolby's managed to do. You know, the fact is, is that the industry has evolved and developed and caught up. I was fortunate enough to be on a panel event, again, a Dolby sponsored one a couple of years ago, and there was a bunch of broadcasters on it. And the British broadcasters, BT Sport were on it, Sky was on it, the BBC were on it. And during the Q&A afterwards, one of the journalists said, yeah, this whole Atmos thing, you know, how's it going to be adopted? You know, how long is it going to take? And the response from Sky was, we've already adopted. You guys need to hurry up. Actually, he swore, but, you know, you guys need to hurry the f up, right? You know, we, we've done it. We're doing it. You just go ahead and buy the kit yourself. That's the attitude we've taken, Greg, right? The, the, the industry will catch up, the, the ecosystems will be built, but that doesn't need to stop me or Mark or Mert or the likes of the Greg Pennies or anybody else, the John Withnalls that we work with, you know, you know ex-Coldplay producer that we work with, who's just adopted like that. I get to work with Amy, one of his artists, and she's already thinking, she's writing in immersive. Yeah, sure. She, you know, so, so my bullishness is based on the fact that you need to be unique um <clears throat> but when you've got infinite possibility i mean that's truly what we're talking about here you know you're talking about a phenomenal creative palette here that allows you to to, to drill down and, and engage with your audience on a music level on a sound level and so we i want to just stick to that core the creative right and empower folks to do that and like i say the rest of the ecosystem i mean i'm, I'm bullish because there is Avid Play. Now I can click a button and distribute. Great. Oh, that's awesome. And that's, a, that's a, a great segue. I actually wanted to ask, you know, I'll open it up to, to all of you. But, you know, considering, you know, now that you, 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 you've all been using Avid Play to distribute some of, some of your, your, your work, labels work, artists work, what does, that, what does that mean for you? What does that mean for your business? What's, it, what's the experience been, you know, been like? I know for a lot of folks, that's a lot, certainly a lot of the questions I tend to get outside of, you know, how do I, you know, how do I mix music in Atmos and Pro Tools? We get that certainly a lot. But now that we've got the distribution level, you know, uh, via Avid Play, what, what's that journey been like for you guys? What, you know, and again, I know I'm conscious of time. I, we've got some great questions coming in. I want to make sure we, we, uh, we go to those. But I did want to make sure we, 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 we spend a, just a, a moment uh, kind of talking about that because at the end of the day we want to make sure this stuff gets out to the listeners right so what what what's that experience uh what's that been like for you guys i'll, I'll uh, jump yeah i, I oh, sorry you want to go <laughs> yeah, that's all you all right well I, I didn't even um think to much have a label or anything like that and until that was a possibility it was well, we don't have to deal with anything. We can just work as we are, put out exactly the record the artist wants, 
I'll hit a few buttons. You'll work with whatever art, artist you want for the cover art and we'll throw it out there and we'll do all the press and promotion and we'll do all the things that you normally do, but on a DIY kind of vibe. And, and you know, to Ray's point, uh, I'm, I'm not in some uh, facility. I didn't build, I, I had to fly home to make lockdown from Chicago. I just ordered a matrix studio and a bunch of Adam speakers and I'm in my living room <laughs> and I have a couple of trusts and I have a very forgiving wife. So I, you can do that anywhere. It's, it's a, a bit much, but it's, it's the exact same attitude with Avid Play. Can I support the artist? Do I have to charge an arm and a leg? I do not. I can just create, distribute, few buttons. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a few pages and it's done. And it's incredible. And the artists immediately get paid. I don't have to do any payouts or anything like that. Yeah, you and don't have to manage any of that. You kind of input the data and it's- No, I get to do the creative part with them. The part that I, I want to continue to work on. Right. No, that's so awesome. It's been an absolute pleasure. And I've been able to then also get people that only hire me for a mix to also say, why would you do Dolby Atmos? Because you can actually, if you're intending to distribute yourself, you can yourself. It does sure. not have to be through me. You, it's open to everyone. And that's been incredible. Excellent. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Yeah, thank you for that, Mark. Um, just so we'll, we'll jump into Q&A here. There's a lot of great stuff coming through, but I don't know if, if Mert, if you wanted to, to add anything to the, to, to the discussion before we jump into the... the uh, I pretty much want to say the same thing. I mean, I had, it was really easy, like being on the early access program with you guys and distributing for five of the artists that I produced, mixing for them. And actually, when the playlist went live, uh, somebody reached out to me from Ohio, um, uh, Jason, who had a rock band, and he was like, man, I've been listening to Atmos like for the past four years on my home theater, and I would like you to mix my song. So it was, to Mark's point, like, there are already fans of music listening to Atmos, and now with Avid Play, like, all of those people can distribute their own content. You know, um, we can mix it for them, and exactly, they can get paid immediately, and they can put it out to the world. Right, and, and can I just add into there, there's something that, that I think is really quite important from an operational perspective, just to sort of point out to everyone. So yeah, sure, I set up a record label, but the question is, what is a record label, right? You know, what, what, what's the value of a record label these days? I don't know, I'm not gonna give you any suggestions on what I think that defini definition is. But what I will say to you is, you know, the doc democratization of tools here. And let's also be very clear, you know, again, this isn't us just being cheerleaders. Currently, there's really only one way you can deliver and distribute immersive audio, right? Let's be clear about that, right? And it's it's avid play, right? You know, you, you can sort of hand deliver it if that's what you want to go down a FedEx route, if you know somebody on the platforms that do support the technology. But the only way to actually do it and actually have the metadata and understand all of the stuff that Mark and Mert are talking about here, then yeah, absolutely. You know, the music industry in terms of uh, uh, the creative side of thing is one thing, but you know, it's big business on the publishing and on the distribution side as well. And so I think this does democratize things. And I, I find our artists and the people we talk to, they, they love the option to be able to go, well, <clears throat> you know, we can do it. You don't have to outsource it to yet another whole right. great big company that's gonna take a cut. Right, yeah, it kind of removes, uh, you know, a couple of layers. Uh, that traditionally have, uh, have uh, gated some of that, you know, mm -hmm. availability. And, 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 and that's not to dismiss, you know, no, 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 some great distributors out there, right. but certainly for where I sit and what we're doing and the level of artists that we work mm -hmm. with, it's, it's, it's a, it's a great solution. Well, certainly. Yeah. Thank you. And it certainly isn't a really exciting time. I th again, from, 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 you know, the, the inspiration that you guys have all talked about, you know, of creating this, this, this uh, music in, in this kind of a space to getting it out to, to listeners. I think it's just a really exciting time. I am, I'm extremely excited myself to, to, to jump in. And I, I you know, again, being, being uh, aware of the time, we've got about eight minutes left. Maybe we'll, I'll hold you guys here for just a couple of minutes. We've got some great questions coming in. So if it's cool with you guys, I'd like to jump in and maybe throw some stuff out to, to, uh, to the panel if that's cool. Um, so the first question we've got here is from uh, Alexander Jenkins. And Alexander wants to know, how are the panelists finding their Atmos clientele? How are they marketing? Is it all word of mouth connections or are you having success with Broadnet advertising? I personally am kind of uh, on the independent artist side with Avid Play. I'm reaching out to bands that I love. I mean, 
Universal and Warner has committed to converting their catalog and, you know, they have teams of people working on that. Uh, but for the independent artists, even though Avid kind of like uh, is doing the marketing for Avid Play, uh, it still needs to be, you know, I don't think it's common knowledge yet that people can distribute Dolby Atmos. So I kind of uh, reach out to the bands that I like, the music that I like and offer them this whole thing and kind of like educate them about the whole process. Yeah, I'm fully, I'm fully independent myself as well. So the same way I always have, it's, it's word of mouth and, oh, you did that record while well, I liked that. And then it's me saying, and I'm creating my mixes in Dolby Atmos and they say, what? <laughs> and you say, you've been to a movie theater, have you looked up and you start explaining and they're like, we can do that? I'm like, absolutely. Well, how much more is that going to cost me? It's like, this is what we're going to do. Like you, you don't have something more if you if you like the mix we'll go for it some some have asked for test mixes and then they say are you this my whole record can be like that well, absolutely so it's it's the same way yeah i, I mean backing up, back, back, backing up what mark and Mert are just saying so it's a lot of being independent it's a lot of outreach uh, but then having said that it's also geographical we're in early days here so you know i set up the mix room in liverpool there ain't no other mix room in Liverpool that does Atmos and Immersive, and that's pretty much the northwest of the UK. There's quite a lot of bands in the northwest of the UK, and they may be of a different level, but to Mark, what Mark's point is, it's all about it's all about that sort of, you know, evangelizing, but at the same time, we do a bunch of test mixes, and then, you know, then the big players walk through the door, right? And that's what happens. And so, yeah, it, it, it's not that we've done any kind of grand marketing, you know, your bag of dark understanding of how to market this um it, it's it's good old-fashioned you know we're talking about cutting edge technologies but it's good old-fashioned who do you know uh you know you know pounding the streets uh showing people with your lots of playbacks um <clears throat> lot, lots of telling people what you can do with all of this getting people enthused and excited awesome so again i mean questions just continue to just pour in so i'm gonna i'm jumping around here a little bit so again Apologies if I can't get to your question specifically, but there's, there's so many great ones. Um, one of the questions that came in here, um, doesn't say who it's from, but uh, basically the, the question is, uh, there are so many ways to master a stereo mix that relies on a lot of image-based processing like MS, uh, stereo wideners, or even the analog chain that can change the imaging. What, te uh, what techniques do you use for the binaural version of the Atmos mix that is streamed on Tidal or Amazon? Uh, Etc. Because sometimes those songs become a hit on YouTube beforehand, so you know the songs have already existed. So does any, anyone want to want to tackle that? Jump one? in just just for the, just to start off. There is no two separate mixes. So there is the the binaural metadata that controls the Atmos mix. So the Atmos mix is the Atmos mix, and that's for the same ADM file that gets uploaded to to Avid Play, and then the binaural metadata is what controls that. So to uh, to, to, to answer the, the, the question, what you hear in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the renderer is what translates onto those, those services. So if you are abiding by the kind of guidelines for you know, loudness levels and things like that, you'll be in a good position to, um, to get that translation onto uh, Tidal on Android devices, uh, Tidal on Apple TV, Echo Studios for Amazon Music, um, and uh, basically any other platform that uh, starts supporting Dolby Atmos music. Learn your I.O. pages, understand the binaural renderer. I set mine up just like a, a console. I don't know if that helps anyone, but there are banks of off, near, mid, far, and then some kind of, oops, I should have put that in a different channel, uh, five in the front, but, uh, but using it as this is where I send things down check your, your headphones and your speakers, check both of them often, see if it translates. All right, that's a good, good point, Mark. And I, I, I will take the opportunity to quickly mention, uh, we will feature a, a little bit of a deeper technical dive into some of the Dolby Atmos stuff, specifically surrounding Matrix Studio. We, we haven't announced the date for that, but you've now heard it here first. We're gonna be diving into that uh, relatively soon, we'll, we'll announce the date for that, but it'll be one of these webinars that we'll, we'll do that on. So uh, if you've got some technical, you know, specific technical questions around uh, creating in, in, in the Atmos space using Pro Tools uh, and certainly Matrix or Matrix Studio, come back for that one. So, but that, that, that's a really good point, Mark, thank you. 
Um, just watching the clock. Um, so is, is there an average, so, so Ryan uh, Uyate wanted to know, uh, is, uh, oh, that just went away. I basically wanted to know if there was a, a specific average level range that you aim for when, when, you're, when you're mixing uh, music in the immersive space. Is there an optimal thing for all platforms? Yeah, so the guidance that's gone out to both uh, Tidal and Amazon is um, for a minus 18 LKFS. Now, for Blu-ray releases, that will actually be lower. So uh, Bernard also asked, you know, where can I find out most music mixes that are not uh, via Amazon Tidal? Well, you can download them from uh, from places like, uh, um, uh, oh my God, the name is escaping me right now. Uh, ah, anyway. Um, um, but you can download some, you can uh, buy Blu-rays. There are plenty of Blu-ray releases out there. The guidelines for those are actually slightly different because they're designed for home theaters. Um, so like the minus 23, minus 24 is gonna suit you better. So if you look at the, like, the Netflix delivery specs where they've got you know, minus 23 LKFS and minus 27 dialogue weighted and all of those sort of things, you know, those are good guidelines based on how the technology actually translates into the real world. So you know, the, the Atmos decoder is the same for film and television as, as it is for, for music. So, um, you know, know what mediums are, you know, know where your target medium is. Um, and if you're wanting to hit something that is uh, more ubiquitous across uh, all of the platforms, then coming lower than that minus 18 is going to serve you better. So minus 18 should really be thought of as the target peak, not, uh, you, know, you know, everything has to hit minus 18. Your classical music come in at minus twenty six, minus twenty seven. The dynamic range is really good, but you know the uh, the, the the pop streaming, you know, you, you, on mobile devices, minus eighteen is going to save you pretty well. Oh, that's 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 good guidance, uh, Carrie. Thank you for that. So we're basically out of time, but there. I mean, again, there's so many great. Do you, do you, would you guys have two more minutes, maybe for one more question, and then we'll we'll wrap it up. Oh, see, what an amazing panel. Thank you guys. So. Um, uh, there are a couple of questions here. I'll, I'll, I'll kind of pick one and see how it goes. Uh, so uh, one, of the, uh, one of the folks here wanted to know, you mentioned distribution and uh, one of the ways to monetize Dolby Atmos. Uh, I'd like to know what are studios charging ballpark for an Atmos music mix? And I guess by studios, I could also mean as a producer, or as the engineer. Uh, of course, you don't have to give your pricing out, but it, you know, maybe talk about you know, is, is there a, a general, uh, you know, figure maybe a percentage increase or something like that, 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 that uh, you've been using uh, in your, in your, in your business model. I personally don't, I've, it's just my, my mix rate and, and that's it. And more often than not, um, you know, it's a single and then it turns into an EP or, or a record or something like that and ends up being on a budget anyway. So I, I don't charge anything different because I'm finding that I'm actually working faster. Things are actually translating better and I have more mixes. Things are getting approved faster and uh, you can't really ask for more. So that's stretching no. the budget. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm with Mark on that. Um, I, you know, I, it's not as though, <clears throat> certainly from our perspective, it's not the same everywhere else, but I'm saying that you know, it's not so much a case of like, oh, we're doing immersive audio, therefore we can charge a premium. Um, you know, there's just a rate that we set in terms of what our studio uh, <clears throat> can, 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 can work with. And that's based on the budget of the people that we're working with, whether that is a Hollywood studio, naturally that's going to be a little bit more healthy versus a, you know, uh, a breaking artist in, you know, the Northwest of England. Uh, that budget's gonna be completely different, if at all, right? You know, cause that's, that's yeah. what we do. I mean, you know, we're not, we're not gonna you know we we will we will absolutely charge the the rate that we know is that the value of the content that we're actually working with right so sure. the fact is, is that we're having the dialogue the value in all of this is the dialogue to actually get the work done versus not having a dialogue previously sure no that's that's an excellent point so i think it, uh, with that what i'd like to do is um again thank you guys so very much for being here with us um, guys, you know, give a virtual <laughs> uh, applause for our, our, our panel. Uh, really quickly, I, I, you know, m one of the takeaways for me, I mean, I, I, you know, I'm cursed in a sense, blessed and cursed with hosting this 
because I'm, I'm mentally taking notes. I'm going to watch this back several times again, because as, as an artist myself, this is uh, this is something that's really important to me. Uh, so I, I thank you guys on behalf of myself and, 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 and everyone here in, in the uh, virtual space and room for all of that insight. I mean, you know, one of the big takeaways I think is, is, is a lot of the fear around the adoption of this has been so, so large on the, on the technical side and then always immediately followed by fear of how am I going to get this out to my audience? And you guys have really kind of helped to quell my fear, my own, my own specific fear. Uh, so I'm very grateful for that. And I'm sure the same uh, as, as we kind of look through the questions and some of the comments coming in, uh, you've, you've definitely helped to, uh, to, to, to quell some of that and give some really great information. So thank you guys so very much. Guys, give it up for Carrie, Ray, Mert, Mark, and Rob. Um, and again, Mert is from the Record House. Although I do like Rocket House, but I think we had Rocket Man on our mind. So apologize for that again. Um, really quickly, I wanted to also mention that we've got uh, a couple of playlists. So uh, some, some, some great uh, Dolby Atmos music playlists uh, distributed through Avid Play on Tidal and Amazon. Um, we'll send this out in our follow-up email to everyone who registered so you'll have these links. And then uh, for everyone on all the other social platforms, uh, our moderators will be, will be send, sending those out uh, there as well. Again, guys, thank you so very much. We really appreciate you being here. Uh, please continue to stay safe. Uh, we will no doubt be hearing a lot from you guys uh, uh, now and in the near future and in the far future. And so guys, again, thank you very much. And to all of you, wherever you might be in the world, thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us. We will be back in a couple of weeks with a new webinar. Be on the lookout for that. Uh, and we will have this available for replay uh, very shortly. So uh, you know, if, if any of your friends, colleagues might have missed it, uh, please do make sure to share this with them. And again, I keep saying it, but please do stay safe and uh, go and check out some great immersive music by these folks and, and some others. So guys, be safe. Again, thank you. And we'll see you next time. Cheers, everyone.